it's part 92 of ASP.NET MVC tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss using AJAX with ASP.NET MVC. ASP.NET AJAX enables a web application to retrieve data from the server asynchronously and to update portions of the existing page. So these partial page updates make web application more responsive and hence improves user experience. We'll be using this table TBL students in this demo. Notice that we have got student ID, name of the student and the total marks they have got. Here is the SQL script to create and populate this table. I'll have the script available on my blog in case if you need it. Now, this is what we want to achieve by the end of this video. We want to display these three links on a view. So obviously when I click all, we want to retrieve all the students from the database table and then display them. When I click top three, then I want to retrieve only the top three students by total marks and display them. Bottom three should display bottom three students. And when we click on these respective links, we don't want the entire page to be loading again. We only want that portion of the view to be updated. Okay, so there are several advantages of these partial page updates. We'll discuss the full list in our next video session. But now let's continue with this example. So the first step to achieve this is to create an ADO.NET entity data model based on this table, TBL students. So let's flip to Visual Studio. Here I have a blank ASP.NET MVC4 application. So let me first right click on the models folder, add a new item. Let's add ADO.NET entity data model and let's call this student model. We want to generate our model from the database. Click next. And we want our connection string to be stored as sample DB context within the web.config file. Click next. So this should connect to the database and retrieve all the tables, views, and stored procedures. We are interested in table TBL students. So let's go ahead and select that. And we want our models to live in models namespace. Click finish. So this should generate an entity with name TBL student. But let's change the name to student. Let's build our solution so that the student entity class is compiled. All right, the next step is to actually add a partial view. In a bit, we'll understand how we are going to make use of that partial view. So at the moment within views, I don't have anything except web.config file. So let me first add a shade folder here. And I'm going to place that partial view within this shade folder. So that, let's right click on the shared folder, add a view, and let's call this underscore student and we want to create a partial view. And I want to create a strongly typed view against student model. And the scaffold template is going to be list. So let's add. So this should create student partial view. So the model for this partial view is going to be I enumerable of student, meaning the list of students. Uh, I don't need this create new link there. And then let's get rid of this extra th. And then let's get rid of this TD, which displays the action links to edit, to view the details, and delete. Because in the UI, you know, we just want the name of the student and their total marks. Okay, so I'm going to get rid of this TD. So basically, what is this doing? Look at this here. We are going to get a list of students. The first TR here displays, you know, uh, the heading, that's name and total marks. That's what we get with this piece of HTML. And then what we are doing here, we are using a for each loop, looping through the model. What is the model here? It's nothing but I enumerable of students. That's list of students. And for each student, we are displaying their name and total marks. Okay, and what I'm going to do here is if you look at this table here, it has got a one pixel solid black border and then the background color here is silver. So let's go ahead and set those styles for this table. So let's use the style attribute and set border to one pixel solid black and background color to silver. Okay, so this is the partial view and in a bit we'll see how we're going to use it. 
okay so that's the second step first step is to add the ADO.NET entity data model second step is to add a partial view which is going to display this interface for us and now let's add a controller let's add a home controller and let's select empty MVC controller okay so within this MVC controller we have index view and then at the class level, at the controller level, I'm going to create an instance of the sample DB context class. So within this entity data model, we should have sample DB context created. So this class is going to help us to connect to the database. So I'm going to create an in instance of that class. And if you notice, this class is present in MVC demo.models namespace. So let's go ahead and include that namespace right here. MVC demo dot models and let's create an instance of sample DB context let's call it DB create an instance of that and then I'm going to add three action methods here okay so look at this when I click on all we want an action method to respond and return us the list of all students similarly when I click top three we need an action method and when we click on bottom three we need an action method so I'm going to add an action method here so let's make a copy of this one and let's call this action method as all you can give it any meaningful name you want but then the return type of this method is going to be a partial view result not an action result okay and why are we going to return a partial view result that's because look at this when we click on this all link you know we don't want the entire view to be refreshed we only want this portion of the view to be refreshed so we're going to return a partial view result okay so here what I'm going to do is basically I'm going to create list of students and let's call this model equals so this DB object has got students collection which is going to give us the list of uh, all students so db.students.toolist should give us the complete list of all the students that we have in TBL students table now what I'm going to do is look at this the return type here is partial view result and how do we return a partial view result using partial view function and when we use partial view function uh, you know we can specify the name of the view the name of the partial view and the model it consumes and if you look at the student you know this is the partial view that's going to display the list of students and what is the model it expects I enumerable of students nothing but list of students so within our controller I'm going to specify the view name as underscore student that's the partial view and what is the model the model object that we have created here okay so similarly I'm going to have a method for returning top three students let's make another copy of this one and let's call this maybe bottom three okay so top three we don't want all the students so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to use order by descending so we want the top three students so I'm going to order by order all these students by descending order uh, but we need to specify based on which property do we want to order them in descending order I want to order them by total marks in descending order and once we have sorted them in descending order take top three students and then convert that to a list okay so simple and straightforward link methods there okay and similarly I'm going to make an exact copy of this one and paste it right here and instead of using order by descending I'm, I'm simply going to say order by so this will sort uh, them in ascending order and we are taking the um, top three so this will give us bottom three students and this is going to return us top three whereas this action method is going to return us all the students okay so the next step is to actually design our index view so let's go ahead and add an index view 
So I'm going to right click on this index action method, add a view, and we want the name of the view to be index. And I am going to Okay, we are going to make use of raise a view engine and let's not create a strongly typed view. Let's write the HTML ourselves. So let's click add. So this should add index view within the home folder. Okay, let's get rid of that there. So H2, what do we want to display? We want to display students. So H2 students. And then the first thing that we want is these three links. Okay, now we're going to use ajax.actionlink HTML helper. Okay, and look at this. To display this link, we are using actually there are several overloaded versions of this action link helper, but we are going to use the overloaded version which takes the link text as a parameter. So this all is the link text that you see here. And this all, the second parameter, is the action method that we need to invoke when we click on that link. And the third parameter is the Ajax options. We'll understand them in just a bit. But let's first write that code here. So at Ajax dot action link. And if you look at this, look at this, there are 12 overloaded versions. We are going to use this overloaded version. So what is the link text we want? All. And which action method we want to invoke? We want to invoke all action method within the home controller. And then Ajax options. So what are our Ajax options? Let's specify them here. Okay, so if you look at this, now on this view, I'm going to have a div tag here. And I'm going to set an ID for that. And let's call this maybe div students. Okay, so what I basically want here is when we invoke that all action method, so you know this is the method that gets invoked, and what are we doing here? We are retrieving the list of students and passing them to this partial view, and this partial view is going to um, you know loop through each student, generate the student table for that for us, and it's going to return that. So when we invoke this all method, we are going to get some HTML along with the data. So where do you want to place that? you know, basically the output of this method within the index view, where do you want to place it? We want to place it within this div tag. Okay, so that is the purpose of this div tag here. And if you look at the Ajax options here, look at this, we are using three properties of this Ajax options object, HTTP method. So what HTTP method do you want to use to get the data? Do you want to do that by using a get request or a post request? We want to do that using a get request. So HTTP method is get there. And what is your update target ID? Obviously, when we invoke this method, we are going to get some data back. So that data, where do you want to put it on your view? So what is the update target ID? So basically, that's nothing but the element ID where you want to place the data that you get. Okay, And then the insertion mode. So how do you want to place that data? Do you want to remove the content that's already there and then put the new content that you get? If that's the case, um, the insertion mode should be replaced. Okay, so let's go ahead and specify these Ajax options here. So Ajax options, HTTP, let's actually format this properly. So HTTP method is going to be get request, target update target ID, that's going to be the ID, this div ID, and then how we want the data to be basically inserted. Insertion mode should be replaced. Or you can choose these other options, insert after or insert before. So let's choose replace. OK, so this should display the all um, link, but we want top three and bottom three. And we need that you know, symbol there as well as separator. And to get that pipe symbol there, I'm going to use a span tag and then specify that pipe symbol there. I'm also you going to use the style attribute and set the color to blue. Okay. 
and I'm going to make a copy of this one because we need other links as well. We need top three and bottom three. So let's make another copy of that. And then let's put this pan tag here. Okay, so um, here we want the link text as top three. And the method that we want to invoke is top three. So within the home controller, we have top three action method. And then let's copy this name. Finally, this is the third link. So here, bottom three. And the action method that we want to invoke is bottom three. Okay, and then let's use another div tag here and set the font family to area. So div style equals font family area. And let's move this closing div tag to the end. All right, that's all there to it. And there's one more step that we need to do. Basically, for all this AJAX to work, we need script files. OK, so we need two script files. The first one is the jQuery script file itself. So let me drag and drop the jQuery file. And then the second script file that we need is jQuery. the Ajax jQuery file we need is unobtrusive you Ajax, unobtrusive you dash Ajax. So let's drag and drop this here. And then let's change this path to use tilde. OK, and it's very important that these script files are referenced in this order, because this one depends on jQuery. So jQuery should be referenced first, and then the jQuery.unobtrusive dash Ajax should be referenced after that. OK, so let's save everything. Let's build our solution, and let's actually run this now. So we should navigate to index view, and then it should display these three links there. And when it first renders, we shouldn't see any data. OK, so there is a compilation error. The name Arial does not exist in the current context. Let's see, what does that mean? Oh, so font family is Arial. Let's refresh that. OK, so when we click All, we should get all customers there, uh, all students, basically. When we click Top 3, look at that, we only get Top 3. And we click bottom three, we only get uh, bottom three. All right, so if I right click on this page and view page source, look at this, the page HTML is so clean. We don't have any traces of JavaScript here. Um, okay, we have the script tags here. And then look at what is generated here for us. For example, if you look at this all link, so here is the uh, HTML for the all link. So we have an anchor tag there. And look at this, data dash Ajax equals true. OK, and data dash Ajax method equals get. And look at the mode replace, because we want the insertion mode to be replaced. OK, so basically, this data dash attributes are used by this unobtrusive Ajax uh, script file. And then it is issuing that Ajax calls to the server. All right. And this is the uh, student partial view code. That's it for today. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.